The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, one of the scribes came up and heard. Heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, Which commandments is the most important of all? Jesus answered, the most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. And the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and there is no other besides him. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear friends in Jesus Christ, so it is the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. We had been reflecting about the journey. We call that, according to Mark, it's Hordos. So Jesus in the journey, he taught them that he had to suffer. So though he taught them he had to suffer, three times they were just blind, like the blind men, like the, like the blind men there, and they could not understand. So here we come to the 31st Sunday in ordinary time, where Jesus entered Jerusalem. With Hosanna, we call that uh, Palm Sunday. So in the liturgical calendar, we don't find Palm Sunday here. But then he had already gone to uh, Jerusalem. And we are, in the, according to Mark, each day is recorded in the Holy Week. So it starts with Sunday. And Monday, he goes to Bethany. And he stayed there, and, uh, uh, and he, clear, clear, uh, clean, he cleared the temple, cleansing of the temple. And uh, though he knew that he's going to die, and he's, going to, he's already there, he is never silent, my dear friends. Jesus spoke wisely, boldly, which provoked the Pharisees and Sadducees. And that was the Monday. And we come and he cursed the fig tree on Monday. And this is the Tuesday. I mean, not today. And Jesus, this is the Tuesday in the Holy Week. Every day is mentioned. And in Tuesday, we have about, it's the most busiest day in, in the Holy Week. We, have, we find 115 sentences in, in this day. So, also it's a busy day where Jesus had to had a lot of arguments where he spoke about the uh, taxing, taxation. He, he spoke boldly and he spoke ag against Pharisees and Sadducees. And this particular person, this scribe, observed him openly. And he's a very genuine man who came to the Lord with a genuine thirst. And he wanted to ask this question, my dear friends. He, he never wanted to test the Lord. So he's a genuine person among all the people who fought with them. Fought with him, Jesus. 
So today we find in the gospel where he asks, what is the greatest of all the commandments? Then why you, you may wonder why, why this question? Why, why, what is the meaning of greatest commandments? My dear friends, it was an argument that time. It was, a, it was a highly questioned argument where they had 100 and 613 laws given on the Mount Sinai. And, and among the 7, 613, there were uh, 365 do's and not do's, pro prohibitions and 248 prescriptions. So, they were, they were so much worried about the law. And uh, they, were, they, they, they had this argument, what is the greatest of all? And to know a little about the Bible, there were a lot of arguments in the Old Testament also. So even, even there was a rabbi called Shammai, he had to drive them away when, he was, he asked them, when people asked this question, what is the greatest of all? And there was another rabbi called Hillel. Of course, he said, he answered. But then this person comes to the Lord because he saw real wisdom in him. He saw real wisdom and asked, what is the greatest of all command commandments? Then only he says, love your God. There's only one God. There's only one God. Love him. Love him wholeheartedly. There is one God. My dear friends, this is important. That you realize there is no other. There is no other. We have only him. Because to become a disciple, you must know, know him completely. If you know him completely, only you will love him. So this concept of monotheism, one God. Of course, this comes, Jesus is combining two laws, two, two laws in the Old Testament. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, we find the same thing. The first reading we wrote, read about it. And in the first reading, we find how Moses was giving this. There's only one God. You may fear the Lord, your God. Because, my dear friends, so they were about to go enter the promised land. It was a pagan land. Because it's a pagan land, there were many gods were there. They worshipped many gods. So they had the danger. Of course, it's a, it's a land with milk and honey, and also it is a hub of temptation. So there, there were nothing to get as example there, were, there was polytheism so Moses had to emphasize, insist that you have only one God you might wonder whether we have, do we have that problem and we don't worship Kali, we don't worship Ghana, we don't worship Patini, we don't worship all the no other God and we don't have that problem, isn't it? But then, we don't have those gods. But we have to ask ourselves whether we have given the priority first and the best place to the Lord. Sometimes, power has become our God. Sometimes, money has become our God. Sometimes, pleasure has become our God. Those things has stolen the place of God, isn't it? So that's exactly why the Lord is insisting today. So we are journeying towards discipleship. The Lord is going to be crucified, persecuted. So he insists that if you want to follow me, if you have to, then you have to take up the cross and follow me. You will never take the cross if you don't experience his love. So that's why, that's why he's forcing this law that there's one God. There's one God, there's no other. So Moses says, you have to love your God with all your strength, 
heart soul mind and strength so you don't have you should not have any place for anyone else he wants you completely he wants you completely he does not want your divided nature he does not want a percentage in your life he wants completely you and you he will in in exodus chapter 20 verse 5 it is said he will never tolerate other gods he's a jealous god so if your lover has become your god and if you have given his place to your husband to your wife to your children sometimes he will never tolerate it i mean he does not have problem with human jealousy but he knows he ex- exactly knows that if you want to enter the kingdom if you want to be at the proper place you have to give the first and the best place to him like a wife like a love the husband israel like people of god they are the bride and he's the bridegroom so this relationship was so strong my dear friends when it comes to heart mind and soul it has a deeper meaning when it comes to the heart heart of a person that is a place where they they had to decide heart is a faculty which could think and decide it's not just a heart where we hear the lap dap where where pump the blood to the whole body so it's a faculty according to the biblical meaning it is a faculty which think and decide that's exactly why in matthew chapter 6 verse 21 we have if where the where your treasure is your heart is also there so when it comes to heart that's a place where you decide and think so your thought your decision should always geared towards the lord you should never have anything apart which is against his thought so you must always think in in his way you have to discern your thought you have to place open your thought before him and ask the spirit to lead you all what you think all what you decide should be according to the will of god there should not be a other way so when it comes to your soul that is the breath that is the conscience breath or the being your whole life should be longing for him you should desire him and when it comes to strength that is your capacity that is each one has a different capacity so you are invited to have your capacity full full capacity to love him so there are you won't have you should not have any other gods in your life any other priorities in your life you have to have only god there should not not be anyone there should not be there should be a person between yourself and your god it has to be clear there should not be any ambition between you and your god it has to be cleared there should not be any desire any craving any pleasure which blocks the sight of god sin will block him that's exactly why those who are pure in heart will see him in matthew chapter 8 matthew chapter 5 verse 8 it is said so it's a beautiful invitation the greatest of all commandments to love your god with your all your strength might heart and soul and the problem is is said then done we are so we are so vulnerable we are so weak according to saint paul in romans chapter 7 verse 15 it is said i do what i don't want to do I I love his commandments yet I I'm unable to follow it I fall apart from that I fall short of it I fall and fail because 
we don't know the gospel properly in john 1 john chapter 4 verse 19 it is said we love each other because he first loved us in john 1 john chapter 4 verse 10 it is said we don't know how to love it is a love of course it can be eros one interpretation of love is eros it's a sexual love it's a dis- love with desire and philios philios is a brotherly love but when it comes to love of jesus love of god it's agape you love without expecting anything you cannot find that example in the world that's why he came here that's why he said you don't know what is love if you if you want to know the love love of god see the lord he gave his only son as a ransom only son without expecting anything we have to learn love from love because god is love there's no other way so let's go before him he's the high priest according to the second reading who gave his life as a ransom in the olden days there was the high priest who went the, with the blood of a lamb and he bridged the gap between god and people because the that connection was tarnished with sin who sprinkled war sprinkled that blood over the tabernacle and rest over the people so that blood of the lamb bridged the gap So here comes Jesus the greatest of all the high priests and he became the prey he became the lamb lamb of god who was slain and he he ransomed that sin he died and with his blood each every year for for passover that high priest had to go to the tabernacle holy of holies but then Jesus once and for all went there with his own blood he ransomed that gap he bridged that gap so that's how he loved us he loved us by giving his life for my brokenness for my unfaithfulness for my double standard nature for my sin for my dirty stinking festering sin without expecting anything when we were cursed he came down and became a slave out of obedience he died for you and for me the moment you experience that you begin to love yourself because the word of god is a mirror where you go in front of it then only you see yourself properly but your friends loving yourself the second commandment love your neighbor as you love yourself loving yourself is not pleasing yourself i mean going for a good party having a nice drink and uh, having fun in the worldly sense you know that's that's hedonism that is not loving yourself you destroy yourself that loving yourself does not mean that love your body pleasure oriented journey no sometimes to love yourself to have you have to say no to yourself Sometimes you have to forego things, sacrifice. That's how how you love yourself. Loving is not pleasing. We most of the time misunderstand this. We think we love our children, live love our, love love my daughter, my my son by giving him what he or she wants. No. That's just pleasing. Pleasing will kill people, destroy their strength. Loving is not pleasing. loving is giving the best what is the best that we have is jesus loving is to give the lord so to give the lord the word of god is double edged sword it will pierce your heart challenge your foundation shake your dreams shatter all your all your whims and fancies sometimes but then love loving is a decision where you decide it's not a emotion it's a decision where god decided to send his only son for my sin so the moment you go before him in your prayer and you go as you are and you tell the truth of your heart open the betray the truth of your heart it's a naked self 
with all the cover ups you undo all the co- all the coverings all the pretense the moment you experience that he loves me as you as i am the way he loves me i begin to love myself i begin to love me without any any deserving thing in the world because we value we measure people's value with all the world things how much they have in their accounts the vehicle they are using the status that they are in their per- their occupation their position no god does not value us like that he look at us as we are and love us as we are the day you experience his love you will be filled with his love the day when you are filled with his love you are called to love the neighbor as you are as you love yourself my dear friends you cannot separate love if it is love it should flow i mean you love should not be stagnated you cannot say in when in one john chapter 4 verse 20 and 21 it is beautifully said how can you love god who is invisible when you cannot love your brother who is visible if it is love it should flow the moment you experience his love in your prayer on the top of the mountain you come down to give yourself i mean the when you were forgiven forgiven like anything you experience the love of god and you come down you see your husband's weakness you see your wife's iniquity you see the brokenness of your children if you don't love them the way he has loved you that is not love that is not love that's why jesus is adjoining these commandments one is in deuteronomy one is in leviticus but only jesus is joining i mean first and second it's one that you love your god with all your strength might and heart and you love your neighbor as yourself but then jesus goes further in john chapter 15 he says love each other as i have loved you as i have loved you my dear friends when it comes to leviticus the brother is only jews you know it was a very narrow kind of understanding because jews are the chosen people they never they they had they never had that open mind to love the the pagans no but then the understanding of the lord is broader for him neighbor is everyone even the enemy is a neighbor that's how he invited us to love and it is a, this it is a decision my dear friends and it is a greater sin about greater sin the first commandment of all but then loving to love is the most difficult thing in the world you know if you love if you love to love it's difficult one saint augustine when people ask saint augustine what is love and he said beautifully what does love look like augustine saint augustine said love has hands to help others it has feet to hasten to the poor and needy it has eyes to see the misery and want he has ears to hear the sighs the lamentation of men loving is a calling loving is a decision so let's the our prayer should be a connection without which we won't be able to bear fruit in galatians 5:22 love is the first of all the fruits of the holy spirit it is the first of all in 1 corinthians chapter 13 st paul says love is above all the virtues love above everything that's exactly why when in john in john chapter 21 verse 15 when jesus asked peter do you love me more than others do he said yes lord i do then he immediately he says then feed my lamb 
It's always connected. Love of Jesus and love of your brother. Without, if you don't experience the love of Jesus, because in John, in Luke chapter 7, with, it is beautifully said, those who are forgiven more will love more. Remember these words. Those who are forgiven more will love more. This love is always the same. But then that, but that, that sinful woman came to the feet of the Lord, wiped his feet with, his tear, with her tears. Jesus said, with her love, this is the, how much of love she has for me. Because she's forgiven. Peter is a broken person. He's the first pope. He was broken because he betrayed the Lord. He negated the Lord three times. And he was crushed to the ground, broken to the dust. And Jesus looked at him at Tiberius he show. And he asked, do you love me more than others do? He, of course. Why others do? Why big, big, more than others? Because he's, for, he's forgiven more. My dear friends, if you know the truth of our hearts, how much we have sinned, don't compare sin, your sin with a, one, with a person who is in jail. No. If you are given more, you are expected of more. Look at your nature. The way you have betrayed the Lord. And if you feel that I am forgiven, I am forgiven, then you will love Him more. The more you love Him, then of course, that is His sheep. Your wife is His sheep. Your husband is His sheep. Given to you, love and take care of. So this is, that's why, that's how both these commandments are connected strongly. Love of God and love of neighbor. So let's go to him, experience him like the branch is connected to the vine. Let's connect ourselves to him strongly. Experience that love so you will bear fruit. You're called to bear fruit. The first fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Amen.